happen. All right, so Esper, Esper Midrange, Esper Thassa, Esper Blink, whatever you really want to call it. So we've got Thassa Deep Dwelling here. At the end of your turn, you exile, exile one of your creatures and then return it to the battlefield under your control. So we've got a variety of good things for Thassa to be blinking here. We've got Bellhaunt, we've got Fibble D. Thip, we've got Atris Oracle of Half Truths. We also have Nope, that's it. That's all we got. Alright, so we got we got those those reasonable cards. We also have Dream Trawler that provides double blue devotion at the top end of our curve. So while it's I think it's gonna be unlikely that this is a creature, we're largely playing this for the flicker effect every turn. On occasion, this will be something that is able to um, able to attack. Past that, we just have good good interactive Esper cards: D Spark, Erasure, Scorn, Mortify, uh, Conquer's Death. Easily my favorite card from the from Theros. So let's go ahead and dive on into a few matches with this one. We are nice and cozy on the Diamond Four Rank Floor after playing some Red Black Titans. So we'll see if we climb up or make ourselves a bet on the floor. Yeah, this thing looks good. <sighs> I'm supposed to bottom her, right? I think I think we're supposed to bottom her. I'm gonna bottom this too, so I can try and find an untapped land. Because ideally, I want to go two, three, four. All right, so I'm not playing this untapped, even though it's painless, because notably Island does not cast Basilic Bell Haunt particularly well. Fibble D. Thip, Brave Warrior, ready to trade with Scorch Spitter here, which I assume they won't offer because they're an Ember Cleave slash Torbrand deck. Draw was a little mortifying. My poor Tefri, what did he ever do to you? Fibble D. Thip would like to trade with us in combat. So I think the play this turn is probably tapped land into kill. Tapped land into kill the runaway steamkin. Wife and you are moving into your first place together. Any advice? Um only only bicker about the things that are really important to you. If you choose to pick your battles, you you're less. If you only battle about things that are really important to you, it'll it'll be obvious that you actually care. Unless you're just talking about home-related things, in which case uh, those can vary depending on if you're renting or owning. Huh. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. We might have died. All right. Oath sounds good. Kaya's Wrath sounds great. Trim some of these more expensive top end cards. Tefri is not particularly good here. So I, I actually really like leaving D Spark in against Mono Red because while they don't have a high density of cards that cost four or more, 
all of their cards that do cost four or more are really high impact. In fact, I think I'm going to trim a Conqueror's Death and bring in the last D-Spark. Like, you have to take Torbran or Cleave off the table or the game basically ends on the spot. This is fine. Not amazing, but fine. Out of the person who just messaged me asking me if I forgot to take the deck off the stream title, uh, I believe it's updated. You might need to refresh on your side, though. Sometimes, especially on the mobile app, it doesn't always update for people who are who are watching but haven't like closed the app and reopened it. That's super unfortunate. To offer counter advice to clinics, I had a home warranty on the first home that we bought. The seller just like offered it as like a bonus. We didn't ask for it. And the home warranty company fought us tooth and nail on every issue that actually happened. They never actually paid for anything. So if you do get it, I would be very careful, especially if you're spending your own money. Make sure you read all the fine print and realize how much or how little it's likely to do. Christy, Christy, and to give context, Christy and I, Christy and I, the within two years of owning our first house, we had the foundation leak. We had the main sewage pipe going from the house out to the street back up, and we or have, get cracked and have a tree root through it, and we had to dig up the whole front lawn and replace it. It was it was a rough first homeowning experience for us. Thanks for the four months, Bowerstein. I appreciate the third of a year. Welcome back. Easy block here. Now, D-Spark is notably awkward in the face of Phoenix of Ash. I hope this wasn't the one that was Elspeth Conker's death. Thassa looking a touch awkward here because our deck doesn't have a high density of things to blink with her. So just kind of a four mana card that didn't impact the board here. And then pretty typical mid range slash control deck problems. I've got answers here in my hand, but my answers don't line up well into what our opponent has in play. All right, I mean, that gets rid of one of them, but like the rest of the text on this card is not about to be super useful here, right? It's a, sh it's a shame this card can't blink Oath of Kaya, huh? Okay, that was a very good draw, huh? This puts us back up to 10. They binned an Ember Cleave. I feel like that means they have another Ember Cleave. Oh, they have a Torbran. Sure. Am I dead? I'm not dead this turn. And I get to blink Thassa again next turn. I'm so dumb. I forgot that that was about to come off of... I should have blocked. 
I forgot I forgot that was about to come off of the thing. That being said, drawing Othakai here is very good. Um I generally like when red aggro decks are good decks in the format. I'm not a huge fan of this existing red aggro deck though, because this existing red aggro deck is pretty close to a combo deck. Sir McLooza, thanks for resubbing for the second month. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. For people wondering why I didn't hold up D-Spark last turn, I couldn't. Wasn't, wasn't an option. Yeah, Bellhaunt. Bellhaunt is black, black, white, white. Dream. Dream Trawler might stabilize us here. Maybe. Should have should have held that land to protect Dream Trawler. Am I drawing a card? I think I'm drawing a card. Yeah, Cleave. Cleave's basically a one card combo. It's pretty obnoxious. So like that land draw means that they get to trade their Phoenix for my Dream Trawler, which is super unfortunate. And then like their graveyard has nine cards in it. So this Phoenix is just gonna like be an eternal thorn in our side. So I have to block cause this gets pumped for three mana. That's true. I can start tapping it with Thessa. That is accurate. I was hoping to, for them to brick a draw for a turn, though. I think I have to block here. I don't think I can just sit there and take two every turn. Hoping to draw another Bell Haunt or an Elspeth Conquer's Death. Or another Fibble Thip or an Atreus. Something something that lets us work with Thassa would be ideal. I think we're just surveilling one here. Okie doke. The old activate to get my auto pass value. Love it. This is them trying to psych us out, right? Yeah, that's them trying to psych us out. They, pro they probably watched the stream and heard me say always take two.
All right, I think we stabilized here. It was close for a second there, but we squeaked it out. Yep, yep. They, know, they know we're done here. Bell haunt, bell haunt plus trawler in hand. Um, I think I'm just clicking submit. I think I might that we boarded. Easy mulligan. Medium keep. I think this is a keep. It's not particularly good though. I think we bottom atris and keep these. Hope to rip a black source. What's our what's our best draw? We wanna like have something to do on turn two. That's super unfortunate because it's a land that's not black. Yeah, I agree, Polly, Polly, that our density of things for Thassa to blink is a little bit on the low side. Well, that at least is a spell we can cast. I would say it helps surveil us into a black source, but that's actually just not true. Let me just take Bone Crusher. Yeah, em Embercleave and Torbran both make the red deck feel like a combo deck, in my opinion. The way the way in which the games play out with those cards feel like playing against combo as opposed to playing against a low-to-the-ground aggro deck with reach. Oh, that was wrong. I need to despark this this turn, right? Or we're mortifying that. Got it. Come on, untap black source. God, if we had an untap black source and get to kill that, like. All right, well, we've lost two black sources now. Four, five, six, seven. Who's got two thumbs and is dead to a top deck land? This guy right here. Dear opponent, please don't kill me. <sighs> oh, oh, diamond for ring floor. Diamond for ring floor. The sweet, y'all sweet loving embrace. Yeah, we, we were dead to a lot there. Like Ember Cleave way overkilled us, but we were we were dead to like shocks and whatever, any burn spells. I think an ice cream or custard places near me. Yeah, there's a couple of like small individual places. There's also chains like Dairy Queen.
Yeah, there's a Culver's. Culver's in town. My bread green fire sounds good. Yeah, I think Thassa struggles a little bit to be relevant. Like, in this deck, we have good targets to blink, but we just don't have a very high density of them. It's just like a piece of disruption puts you in a bad spot. So here's the thing, though, Captain Shenanigans. The reason why I don't like how the red aggro decks play out is because the way in which you respect them is very different than traditional aggro. You don't respect them like they're an aggro deck most times. You have to respect them like they're a combo deck. So I don't I don't think the way they play out actually has the result which you're implying it has. I agree that having aggro decks be good in a format, traditionally speaking, is good for the format. As much as I need to draw a land, I don't want them drawing cards. I'm just going to mortify this now. Untap Black Source. Untap Black Source. So, if they try to claim Fibblethip here, he runs away at least. Has the, has the decency to just leave instead of, instead of hurting us. man feels esper how many lands are in this deck of course of course there's 26 lands in this deck why would there why would there be a number of lands other than 26 Well, it's a good one to get rid of. This trades with this, thankfully. The cat kills us relatively quickly, though. I suppose if we had another untapped land next turn, we can Dream Trawler. They should have a hard time racing that. I feel like I'm super far ahead if they don't start drawing a bunch of cards, so I'm gonna kill this. I guess they're already drawing with Castle, though. All right, I'm back. Sorry. Wanted to take my teeth out and have something to eat. Uh, second bell haunt stabilizes us nicely, huh? Sounds like the plan. I can also conquer's death and get rid of the woe strider. 
Aza doesn't actually get rid of it, because they just, like, sack it to the oven and escape it back. Gosh, I'm going to concede this match. We don't have a single way in our deck to interact with Oven. Let's adjust the sideboard a little bit. Get some Kaya's in here, maybe. Uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to read Libation. Probably don't mind some Aether Gust in my 75 too. It's a lot of mystical dispute. Ember Cleave's really, really strong. It is very, very good. Right, we just added some Aether Gusts and stuff, so hopefully, hopefully it's a little bit easier than before. I think I actually keep that land. With double Dream Trawler in hand here, I think I want to just, like, guaranteed be able to play these on six. Prince over Fibble Thip. That would definitely be better in these red matchups. It's quite a bit worse in the non-red matchups, though. It's, ve it's very easy to make knee-jerk changes to your deck after you run into the same matchup twice, but usually you want to take a step back and think about it a little bit more than that. There's a Rimrock probably or a Bone Crusher.
I think I like this. Othakaya, Kaya in. Kaya's Wrath in. Just all the Kaya card. A couple of Aether Gust. We'll trim Tefri. We'll trim a couple of Thought Erasures. We'll trim some of our more expensive win conditions that aren't Dream Troller. Let's give, give that a go. As appealing as it is to keep a hand with all of our colors, I just don't think I can keep a hand with no no plays till turn four. Especially on the draw. Fatalizer, thank you for the brand new Prime Support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Glendia. We're having a wonderful Wednesday wherever you're out in the world. That sounds great. Wait to go. Two drop on two. Two drop tap land on three. Atros on four. JK, LOL. The gen deck was pretty clunky. Three, oh, perfect. Three, three color aggro mana bases are not great, especially when your splash color is trying to play your one drop. Take three here down to 13. I've really liked Agonizing Remorse in this format. I think the upside to Exiling tends to be relatively high. I think, I think it's pretty marginal either way. I think there's a lot of different things in this format. Another thing to talk about too in that comparison is that Agonizing Remorse does cause you to lose life, which makes your discard spell that's already not great against aggro even worse against aggro. So that's a pretty important distinction. Trying to bone crush Fibble Defip, lol. I think I just Othakaya here and get rid of their one that's dealing two per turn. Because if I play this and they kill it, they just hit me for three again. That's not stellar. I think I'm just going to Conqueror's Death, the Bone Crusher Giant here. I did not know Oath was on top, but can you tell me why, when I can't play another spell that turn anyways, Pekin, that... Actually, to articulate, your your line is strictly incorrect. You should always scry at the last possible second if you're going to be out of... If you're going to be done for the turn anyways. So, I'd rather wait to scry when I have more information. See if they want to activate Castle before I kill their thing.
So pretty happy to trade there, even though I have Thassa in my hand, because it's important that I take all their creatures off the board, since they have an Ember Cleave. Ember Cleave's a way they could kill me through the Dream Trawler. All right. A little bit, a little bit better beat against Red there. Didn't quite get combo killed. Got hit by, got hit by an Ember Cleave and lived to tell the tale. You most certainly can, Crunchy. As a heads up, we've been playing this one for about 40 minutes, so probably another 20 to 30 minutes before I'm done with this one, though. But I definitely have time for at least one more. I take a while to farm, rank four to five in raid. Uh, a little bit. The sixes take forever, because to get a six star, you need, you have to sacrifice five five stars to it. But of course, once you have your first six star, you get to farm the higher stages, which means you get XP faster. Like when you when you can farm the later stages, like three run through a stage 12 brutal levels uh, champion from one to 10, so it goes faster. Dynavolt Tower is viable in the current format. Probably not. I, I would bet that Dynavolt Tower is a little bit too slow and fair for Pioneer. With the... Uh, with... <coughs> With the new combo decks that Theros introduced, both Inverter and Ballista Combo, it feels like Pioneer's gotten a little bit faster and more brutal. <clears throat> I'm just drawing a card with this right away, just in case they kill it. I guess the most common blue-red deck, they could be Teamer Wreck. And if they're Teamer Wreck, maybe I want to wait so this could downtick on the Reclamation. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. I totally forgot there's a there's a breach the underworld deck too. Let's get it with the old draw step thought erasure now. I expect we'll see them scry here. Defree's real good in this matchup. Yeah, draw, draw step thought erasure is one of those things that elicits strong feelings in both directions. Um, I just take the Storm's Wrath, right? The rest of these cards basically just don't matter. Feels, feels teamer reclamation, man. Feels team of reclamation. Tyrant scoring is bad here. 
Ashiok's a little slow. This kills Reclamation. D-Spark seems fine, too. Need two more cuts here. What are my, what are my trims? Definitely rotation's not till the fall. October. Hey, Crunchy. Thanks for the tip. Huh. Maybe Ugin's just too slow. He's a win condition too, though. Maybe these Conqueror's deaths are just too slow. I don't think I've ever had Nutella. I have plenty of sugar things. It looks great. Needs some lands, but you got some surveils in here. In addition to having good disruption, this two, three, four curve is probably one of our better curves here. Disruption, disruption, threat. Perfect. It's a land that helps us find more lands, just like we drew it up. Swish. I don't know what that is, Thantos fellow. Disputed, yep. I think we just erasure again this turn. In the event that they like counterspell and then untap and play Reclamation, I have Teframe, so now I have that too. What makes this deck mid-range seems more controlling to you, semantics. <laughs> I think it's just Sea Ordain. Yeah, I think it's just Sea Ordain. The rest of their hands like pretty mediocre. I'm gonna keep that as a guaranteed fifth land. Yeah, I don't think you're alone in that feeling, uh, Jensen. I think a lot of, of like, it's. I feel like it's pretty rare in Magic that mirror matches are especially entertaining. So, like, having the deck you enjoy play a bunch of mirror matches tends to reduce the enjoyment of it for a lot of people. Yeah, so like Oko's different because like when I say mirror matches, I don't mean single card mirrors. Like not every deck that played Oko was the same archetype. So, like, Oko was, like, omnipresent because it was correct to basically play it in everything. So, 
just like saying something was an Okomir generally didn't make sense. That's actually quite annoying. Sure. Eugene sounds fine. I guess it's actually not too bad. They kill Tefri here, and I'm like, I get to conquer's death them. Because the auto tapper doesn't consider other cards in your hand that it can't cast immediately. I also didn't really care because I wasn't planning to hold up D Spark. Oh, we're just killing me, huh? That's, that's a decision. Bold strategy for him, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off here. So I didn't want to slam the Dream Trawler because I expected them to be killing my Tefri. But if Dream Trawler is just going to resolve, yeah, let's uh, let's make it happen. Robo Reagan, thank you for the 19 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And like next turn, I am actually missing a third. But I say next turn I can Conqueror's Death, uh, Brazen Borrower, while still holding up Dream D Spark. But it's actually not true unless we draw a White Source. Bottoms up. You love to see it, chat. You love to see it. Scry me a river, baby. Trawler is real, real good. Do I attack and hope to draw White Source? I think the answer is no, just because if I miss, they could kill Tefri and then have Reclamation plus the draw spell plus Expansion Explosion to put me in a bad spot. So I think I just leave, leave Trawler back for now. Play defense for my Planeswalker. Bottoms up. Okay, so we uh, we have a game, as they say. I guess we kind of have a game. Like Elspeth Cocker's death is gonna bring that guy back in a second. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. Attack for the old the old draw card. Swing the hit points 10, 10 points. Hey, Zekthen. Thank you for the 16 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are.
Yeah, I don't know that I really like Ugin in this build. This is a card I'm kind of uncertain on. I feel like Elspeth Conquers Death covers a lot of the use cases this previously had. Like, this isn't technically a threat on its own, but, like, it's a removal spell that generally comes with a threat since it brings something back. So we have Aether Gust and D Spark to hold up here. Oh, you can blink tokens to draw the card, sure. We lost, we lost a match to Teamer Reclamation for the first time earlier today, and I was thinking maybe we were wrong about it, but like, we've played it twice now since then, and it's just like, died and done nothing both of those times yet again, so like, you know, feels like, feels like home. Well, this doesn't trigger Dream Trawler. This isn't technically drawing cards. Hey, Beef Chief, are you here in chat? So I can just like verbally tell you the answer to your question or your request in Discord. Are you in are you in Twitch chat? You posted a question in Discord five minutes ago, so maybe you're not here in chat. Yeah, definitely Stormy Waters. In case Beef Chief is here, if they don't respond in chat, I'll answer them in Discord again later. Um, as a heads up, they asked if I could put a change log for decks on my website so people can know when they're updated. The deck lists on my website are always updated. That my website, the purpose of my website is so it's not a site like Goldfish where you have to go always look and dig through results for the latest lists. All right, so I punted here. If I would have played the Tefri pre-combat, this wouldn't have happened, and they they would have died. They're gonna get another turn. I don't think the I don't think the additional turn matters, but definitely should have done this pre-combat we were talking. So, you can you can always know when you're looking at deck lists on my website that the answer to is this updated is yes. When a when a few days after a with immediately after a set comes out is like the only time where there's a small window, but usually I sit down the first weekend after a set release. Why didn't I despark the borrower? I'm gonna give you ten minutes to figure that out. Give me 10 minutes to conclude why we didn't despark the borrower. <laughs> Flavor ruling, Deep Spark only works on Planeswalkers. Fair. Harsh, but fair. I think Vanifier combo is still viable. Yeah, I think it's fine. I 
I don't think it's by any means the best deck in the format, but I think it's definitely capable of winning games. We're just killing people. I mean, to be fair, the ways in which this deck is killing people, like, you could kind of, you kind of shoehorn into Esper control. I feel, I feel like the Thassa part of this deck is probably some nonsense. Agonizing Remorse before attacking. What what could they have had that casting Agonizing Remorse before attacking prevents? Why why is it good to cast Agonizing Remorse pre-combat? What am I what am I preventing there? I would I would make the argument there isn't a card that exists that makes me need to cast Agonizing Remorse pre-combat there, and it's strictly more efficient to not uh not take the extra game actions. If you can think of a card I'm forgetting that makes it relevant while they have two mana up to Agonizing Remorse there. I don't know about Hero. Hero of the Precinct one's a card that's like kind of disappointing every time we play with it, I feel. It's pretty, it's pretty mediocre. Fibble, I agree that Fibble, Thip, and Thassa seem kind of whatever. I wouldn't, wouldn't mind them being something else. What two decks will face each other in the world's final match? I have no idea. That's probably, that's probably a question for a competitive player. We're, we're a full-time meme on this channel. All right, bottoming Tefri against turn one basic mountain. Okay, looking for some bell haunts here. Looking for some removal spells. That's, that's good if we can live to get there. Yeah, I think Thass is, like, good when we can utilize her, but it just feels like... It just feels like we don't have enough ways to really utilize her for her to be truly useful. Now, the real question here is, do I bounce this Bone Crusher Giant? I feel like the answer is I ba bounce this Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, Othakai is great. This is game one, so my opponent didn't know they were playing against control. Their hand seems quite reasonable against a, a red mirror. All right, we're gonna take the card that kills us. Hopefully they brick on land so that when they play this this turn, if they go land double rimrock, we're gonna be in some trouble. Perfect. Now, now we're actually going to be in a pretty good spot. We get to curve this, exile this into land Dream Trawler. And like, as you can see here, like, just kind of talking about what we were talking about a second ago, like this Thass is basically just a brick, right? Like, we're winning this game because we were an Esper control deck. Esper, Esper interactive deck. Now I'm dream, dream trolling. Do do do, beep beep do. Board like this, see how it feels. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut the fasses actually. Keep some of these other cards. Let's just do that. Just be Esper. Thassa, Thassa could technically technically untap your Dream Trawler, right? You like attack with it and blink it. Elspeth Conqueror's Death is very, very good. It's probably probably my favorite card out of Theros, and it's it's very strong.
I can't keep this against red on the draw rate. Right? It just doesn't do anything for too long. Well, shoot. You think I can get the seven back? You think if I ask really nicely, they'll give me the seven back? Uh, I mean, like, just to reference, like, the Simic Ramp deck on my website, Enya, the Simic Ramp deck on my website only has a singleton questing beast in it, and that's largely there because you get two virtual copies of it with, uh, with what's it called? The, the search, the search spell. You know, no one drop means, yeah, wow, okay, sick. I think I'm not gonna hold up Mortify this turn and just, like, hope they put, like, Torbran, hit us for five, then we untap in Kaya's Wrath. Perfect. Goodbye, friends. Hopefully they deploy one threat here and we draw land, land. So next turn we can Thought Erasure plus Mortify. All right, I would like your Ember Cleave, please. Spinning that. All right, so we're taking three inside of combat this turn, going down to eight. It's a very scary lizard chat. Very, very scary lizard. Bone crushes ready. Lands. Lands. Where are my tracks of lands, chat? We even kept we kept a four lander this game, right? Like I kept four I mulliganed to five and kept four lands one spell. Is this how you repay me, deck? Such disrespect. Land. All right, all right, I'll take that. That's better than a land. Things things that are better than a land for 100. You know what? You know what, I'll take it. You discard a card, I gain three. Sign me up. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to do this before I play Dream Trawler here because they have Castle in play. So like, Castle would let this the giant trade with my Trawler, which is not ideal. This game should be over it now. If they don't if they don't kill us next turn, the game is over. So they could they could have this be a burn spell and have this be a burn spell and then we die, but if they're not like runner runner here, they're going to be they're going to be gone. Great. Survey says, Papi! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can build that for to beat Mono Red. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so. I felt like the, the Thassa mid range blink part of this deck was mostly a miss here. I feel like the good parts of what this deck is doing, like this felt very reasonable. More specifically, I think Bell Haunt's a pretty fine card in general, especially when you have ways like Despark and Mortify and other spot removal to like keep it from getting cloned through by Cleave. Um, I think if you're getting rid of the Thassa, you, you like blinking these tokens is like one of the few reasons to have this over... Something like Ashiok or Conqueror's Death. I might trim this, just drag the curve down a little bit, put some more cards in the main deck that lets you respect red, like, you know, Oath of Kyers or maybe main decks of Wraths or... But over overall, the Esper core featuring Bell Haunt felt very reasonable. But I think uh, Dream, Dream Trawler is a constructed playable card that's very good. Very, very good. All right, what are we doing? We had a cut the line donation for
for a Bant Happily Ever After deck. So we are going to go ahead and hit a quick add roll. I'm going to get set up for that. I also need to run to the restroom and brush my teeth so I can put my Invisalign back in. So we'll be back in just, just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.